for another tune in tuesday yeah. this is episode 22 of project nyan tune in tuesday and today we are connecting collecting life lessons from three fantastic individuals who joined us on how to honor our body uh now why this topic irrespective of who it is i'm sure we all have struggled during some part of our life where you know we all have thought am i enough i'm not not even good enough am i enough is my body feature okay is my height okay is my weight okay is my eyebrow okay is my eye looking okay is my color of the skin okay everything we've tried to compare ourselves to somebody else and try to judge ourselves saying is this enough or do i have to do better if we stop there great but if we went ahead and then put ourselves down it could be possible that we were shaming our own bodies and not accepting the way that we were looking at ourselves so here are three fantastic individuals who walked that path and who really learned uh, lessons and today know how to honor their body irrespective of what the world has to say what peers have to say or what they also tell themselves is far more beautiful than what they used to say before So, without further ado, let's start off our discussion. I'll introduce you about all these three uh, three guests quickly. We uh, with these three guests, by the way, it's going to be sixty ambassadors who've come in and who've spoken on Project Nyan platform and shared their life lessons. First up is Punita. Punita is my schoolmate. Uh, so, for all of them who've joined from Kamal Convent, I don't think I even need to introduce who's Punita Kashyap. Hi, guys. Yeah, she is one of the most bubbly person who was there in our school. In spite of being a junior, to me, I always knew Punit Punita was there in the school. Uh, irrespective of how she looked, even if people had that doubt while they spoke to her, she always carried confidence. I'm talking about fifteen, twenty years ago. From then to now, I remember who Punita was for just the fact saying, you know, you should know how to honor yourself and. when i was looking at okay what's the topics that we should really be talking about when i saw punita's uh, uh, profile where she put up some picture and i happened to check it on facebook i was like no punita has to come and talk and i have to have a topic on body honoring and uh, thank you so much <laughs> punita for agreeing to do this and for being here with us today thank you thank you so much kripa needs my privilege to be on this uh, episode thank you so much punita The next person is Sanam. Uh, how do I know Sanam? Sanam was uh, one of the guests who was there. Uh, that person's best friend and happened to, uh, you know, when we said we wanted to talk about body honoring, that guest mentioned saying nobody else other than Sanam can do it very well because she has had her own journey and she is somebody who can really tell what really goes into a person's life when you transform. And uh, then we connected to Sanam and thank you so much, Sanam, for agreeing to do this and for thanks for having me. For Thanks, supporting sir. us on this platform. Thank you, sir. The next person is Jayanti. Now, uh, for amongst this community here, so she is the youngest of all the four of us whom you see on the screen. But I think somebody who is much more matured than the three of us, who has had her own struggle, her own path, her own way that she has uh, handled uh, body shaming. including from their from our own family from our own friends who are not doing it knowingly i think they were doing it for the ha- happiness for yeah. the way that they wanted to show love but from there to where she has transformed herself and what she has made out of herself is a beautiful journey and we thought we should have jayanti also come and share those life lessons with us and thank you so much jayanti for agreeing and doing thank this thank you thank you for calling me and asking me to share whatever i have experienced in my life thank you so much thank you jayanti so my first question to all three of you before we go ahead is this how did you start honoring your body is it's it's not so easy we all find it so difficult especially when we stand in front of the mirror i don't think it's it's easy not to be judgmental right we always say yeah. oh my god this is not okay this is not okay probably i need to put a co- co- you know i have to conceal this i have to do something here i have to change my hair color more than saying wow i look beautiful i think mostly it's about this is not okay this is not okay <laughs> what happened in all of your lives how did you change and how did body honoring happen from where did this start punita do you want to take over and take that question first yeah uh, see uh, kripalini this d- didn't happen over a night or a, not just a sudden realization that i should uh, be a heroic person and i should start honoring my body it definitely took for me years to realize that i am what i am no matter what how others see me this is how i am and i have accepted myself i don't care what others think of me so this realization took 
i think a couple of years for me when i started seeing other people who had so many problems physically mentally or whatever whatever problems they had irrespective of that they started showing that they can do something in life so when i saw them you know i thought why in what way am i less i have a good iq i can talk to people well i can jump i can swim i can run so why don't i start counting on my positive aspects and start uh, cultivating those positives into something bigger so that's how i decided uh, over a period of time that instead of sitting and cribbing over what i don't have let me start making that i have so many plus points let me work on it and challenge those people out there who tell that you can't do these things you can't do those things that yes i can do it so that's how i started to honor myself and uh, yeah i think you yeah, mute because yeah. you said this punita if i can follow up and ask you one small question is how easy or difficult was it for you to start move out of that phase of saying okay i'm not going to look at myself in a bad light i'll come into a good light how easy was it was it like just quickly overnight or did it take time for you to change definitely it was not overnight i have had n number of nights where i have come home cried to my mom telling ma so many are commenting out they are on the streets people are calling me names kuli shorty what not i have even been called boot by someone so uh, all those names have really hurt me and it has taken uh, a lot of time for me to sit and console myself and uh, thankfully i had my two biggest pillars of strength that is my mother and father they never ever made me feel that i am somewhere less compared mm. to others they yeah. never made me feel that i am abnormal compared to others and the plus point was i didn't have a sibling i don't have a sister or a brother so yeah. thankfully there was no one in the house to compare so that plus point i uh, was there for me and my mo- mom always told me that height is not a minus point you are not physically challenged you right. can do all the activities so uh, it definitely took me time and i have had n number of episodes where i have cried i have um, fought with god i have cried in temples uh, you know literally shouting at god uh, asking why god why did you do this for me why did, why not make me a proper person a normal person yeah. so it, it was not easy for me kripali it really took a lot of time yeah. and but yeah with the help of my parents and my very supportive friends i could come out of it Right. Uh, yeah. Punita, if you can tell our audience today from where you were and what you've become professionally and who you are, uh, so that whoever is watching, they know that you know. If you take that brave step, where can they reach? If you can probably talk about where you are currently. Okay. Let me quickly tell my story. So yeah, basically, I'm a bachelor in dentistry, a dental dental surgeon. Uh, I was born on 28th March 1988 to my parents Kanakavalli and Ravindranath. they were two beautiful souls and yeah when i was born like just like other kids people were like oh she's so cute she's a angel and things like that no one ever knew that i would grow up to have a short height problem uh, even the gynecologists nor the pediatricians knew that this girl will grow up to have a short height problem they were like this girl is very normal this baby is just normal so after 8 to 10 years that's when i was crossing fifth standard people started realizing that no this girl has height height issue her height is stopped compared to other kids of her class so that's when we started realizing that okay this girl is having some issue with her height she is not growing vertically i was growing horizontally but not vertically so uh, but yeah just like other moms who are protective my mom was very over protective she never took me to any doctor she went on telling god will take care you said just start praying god he will take care so i used to listen to her go to every temple go to church mosque pray to god that please make me tall please make me tall and cry so um, yeah but uh, what happened is there were uh, so many even instances where uh, on the roads and the, my school mates my van mates the people on the road so many people were commenting on me telling that okay look at this girl she is just not normal she her height is very less and things like that i mean even now people comment it's not that it has stopped even now people comment so those things used to sit in my mind telling that oh my god i am not normal but again as i said my parents were my biggest biggest support 
uh, they never told me that something is wrong with you uh, she, she, my mom used to tell that you are very good in other activities you can talk so nicely you i was getting a good rank in school yes, so and you can bring life into any room punita any room <laughs> that's really a god's gift that uh, i'm able to talk so confidently so and i can sing music is my biggest passion my mom was a music teacher and i learned music from her that was like my biggest uh, what to say whenever i was depressed music was like a companion for me yeah. so that was that pulled me out of depression uh there were so many even relatives in my own house who used to pull me down telling oh god this girl is not abnormal I mean, she's not normal you need to take her to ayurvedic treatment homeopathic treatment uh, mm-hmm. take her to this god and get this puja done uh, mm-hmm. all sorts of nonsense was happening in my house but again yeah. my mom was like no i don't care i will make her mentally strong whatever happens uh, mm-hmm. i will make her equal to others mentally yeah let her yeah let us stand in this world confidently no matter her height is less let mm-hmm. me make a strong mentally this was what my mom's ideology was uh, so but the major minus point for me was i lost my mom when i was in 10th standard mm-hmm. she was the biggest support to me yeah. but i moved on after that and uh, uh, through general merit i got into bds from government dental college bangalore uh, not by any quota or by uh, anything else i just got in through merit and i got a gold medal from university when i cleared in 2010 and again i remember when i joined dentistry the first day my lecturer told me that punita you cannot do dentistry you cannot reach a patient you cannot treat a patient why have you wasted uh, your life by joining dentistry you could have taken just a simple course like ba bsc and uh, become a receptionist yeah. or a clerk you know yeah. this was the first first day comment i got when i joined dentistry yeah. but again i challenged myself i said no 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 i should do this mm-hmm. when they are telling a no to me i should challenge and do something yeah. so i proved them wrong i uh, made my own chair positions mm-hmm. i used to recline the dental chair and do treatment even now when a patient walks into my hospital he asks for me can i meet wow. dr punita so yeah. that that is what i am and uh, yeah and a major what to say one more episode which i would like to recollect is yes. in india especially especially government places people mm. put you down royally so when i went to apply for my dl that's my driving license in the yeah. year 2015 that rto officer bombarded me he said why are you attempting to drive you cannot reach the accelerator nor the brake or whatever you are going to kill someone on the road so mm. you are educated why can't you uh, keep a driver and pay him why do you want to come and uh, learn driving right. again this was a big challenge for me i said no i want to learn driving for my own independence mm. i bought a car i learned on my own through the help of my close friend and i challenged that same rto officer and i got my dl wow. uh, so again uh, there are a lot of people in india and your own close circle who pull you down but every time someone used to pull me down i had, i had decided that no someone some x person can't pull me down if someone has something has to pull me down it is my own energy so when yeah. i have good positive energy and a will power to do let me try if i yeah. fail it's okay if i fail i might fail but let me try so these were the things and uh, what else to tell so today i am a practicing dental surgeon and i have worked in a couple of uh, hospitals like vasan dental care sapka dentists yeah. and other places uh, yeah this is where yeah. i am today you know what uh, parita that's such a beautiful way that you explained you told it in a nutshell but there's so much for each of us to learn from what you're saying irrespective of what is the issue if you decide that you want to really go ahead i think that's a very good life example live example that we are seeing in front of us where you know somebody who was always put down somebody who has always been commented about to becoming a doctor and she's called dr punita kashyap today not many who commented also have even gone closer to who she is today and uh, also having a good family and she has a beautiful daughter a very naughty beautiful daughter <laughs> yeah she she is leading life if you want to call it as normal and if you if you term that as normal she is beyond normal she got she's been blessed with everything that every other person would want to get right and irrespective of what it is what, what was her uh, probably 
if 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 you had to put a boundary i think she knew how to break that boundary and come out so for all of you who are listening to this i hope you know you're learning from this and you're understanding and gypsum yeah, let me tell them my height kripalini yeah, my height please, is 4 please. feet 6 inches not more than that not less than that i am yeah. way below 5 feet if yeah. people think that i am somewhere 4 11 and all no i'm 4 6 and i'm proud of it wow wow that's such a strong statement punita so proud of you and kudos and more power to you girl and gypsum uh, i hope you're enjoying the conversation so happy to see that you're you know you're welcoming them and you're saying hello to them and uh, neelatri is here he is also very happy seeing Hi. all three of you here uh, shamshuddin is saying hello to all of you and balu is already Hi. saying that this is a very inspirational talk and he's already inspired so over to you sanam if you can share your story with us if you can tell us about you know your journey of accepting your own body well uh, punita thanks for that inspiration It's nothing close to what you have uh, gone through and you know really it's it's all your resilience that has made you what you are today you know so i don't know whether my story is you know somewhere close to that though but uh, what i would like to uh, highlight from my journey is uh, i never i was never a, a child with body issues let's start yeah. from there right. uh, you know i never thought or looked at my body i even did not have any kind of uh, as far as i remember a kind of unnatural body standards nothing yeah. like that i never had i think in fact that was more to do with because i was a tomboy yeah. uh, again that i know many people who have commented on you know how i look how my hair is but that never affected me as a child and then there came an, a moment uh, where um, so i was i i grew up in a place called muskat uh, in oman so once i reached high school uh, back in the back in late 90s early 2000s we moved back to kochi my hometown and uh, and then that was uh, like when you know the truth strikes it it's a whole, it's like you know as though you're getting out of a bubble uh, all all this time you know and then you get you get i mean there are so many i feel i have more positive things to say about the move than negative mm-hmm. but since our topic is on body shaming and uh, thing i would say it's when i was just put down to our own culture and our hometown between our family our friends our neighbors people who are just like us mm-hmm. is when i realized that people have actually standards for body sizes body colors uh, it's just not about skin color or body it's also about you know uh, if for example for men balding hmm. all that was getting highlighted and that's when an uh, a kind of an early teenager me started realizing you know oh these all have its own definitions and people have comments for everything people right. i just realized that people have comments for everything that some maybe the bulk of the comments can be unintentional it can be something that to help you because it's your loved one speaking after all right it's your family who's telling you oh do you think you need that you need to eat uh, that pizza or do you need to heat that biryani you know these kind of things unintentional but some of them can be overt and it can also be mean and it can be intentional uh you know just to put you down and when they see somebody who's confident and who that doesn't affect them there are people who actually want to put you down now that that came over time realizing over time and then i came to a point maybe to give a like a perspective so a, a teenager me would be of a body of a, of a dress size of uk 8 and to me that is like okay i was not uh, let's say right. fat uh yeah. and i never had any qualms of being fat in the first place you know Yeah. but then even then in school i used to be known as the more healthy one because i had an athletic body because i was into athletic athletics mm-hmm. and uh, people used to say that oh yeah she's she's fat or you know there's to be names there might be me associated with you know fat actresses and you know, these kind of things and as a teenager i should say that it started affecting me it started affecting me so much and now now the years pass we go into university there are more mean things that are said to us there are, there are comments that are unwelcomed Right. comments that uh, uh, that touch base on you know sensitive issues like your culture your religion your family you know all these i know there has been people who have faced probably even worse situations right. uh, but just i'm i'm sure today you ask anybody there would be at least one instance that they can pick out where people have just commented for the sake of commenting <laughs> unwelcome 
comment yeah. okay so what my point is i started off as a person as a child who never had any body issues i grew up as an adolescent who realized that oh i need to fit some standards which the society called it normal right and then i grew out of it where we okay then we, then came a point oh god the the biggest turning point where you know you are put in the marriage market yeah and at that time you have these oh my god standards <laughs> that you need to be oh, yeah. of a certain skin color a certain height uh, you need to fulfill so many things yeah just to fit into that you know just to fit you know, to fit into that criteria yes and who defines these criteria long story short of course i i fell into the rhythm right so you fell or fall in oh yeah by the way do your eyebrows do your upper lips uh, oh yeah do this do that and all that you know and all that and it starts slowly sinking and it starts affecting the child will never affect in the first place you know and I starts know. affecting and then you get on to a point where you know you go once in a year back at back home there are relatives even today i'm 34 years old today even now if i go back there will be people who are like oh my god what are you eating there you know you've been only eating you know and they have solutions or like what punita was saying they have solutions for everything you like <laughs> i think you should hit the gym oh i think you know they they go up to like oh i don't think she'll ever lose weight you know she right. she i don't think so you know and and that's one side of thing and then there's another side of pe- set of people who think that uh, praising weight loss is a conversation starter that should automatically make me feel good make anyone feel hey you lost weight that means you should feel good about it <laughs> it is the norm <laughs> you should feel good and the stigma around weight gain yeah that is toxic yeah that is see you can see you can be a person like you started kripani you can be a person looking into the mirror wanting to do whatever you want with your face or your body or your good dress and all that's up to you if that makes you feel good do it it doesn't matter who says what you know but on the other side please do not do it just to you know feed into somebody's comments because that is going to slowly slowly take you away and you're digging your own grave and yeah. this we have realized when you're already in your midlife yes so <laughs> and i think after start sanam so you know uh, the reason that i wanted to have this conversation is also that the what happens is this body shaming issue does not start when we are 20 20 25 30 it actually gets inculcated into our heads when we are kids probably mm-hmm. from the age of 3 4 it starts off and teenage time is oh. when that over confident or a strong individual falls apart when somebody yeah, exactly. i think that is exactly what you're trying to say saying you know a confident girl who has been athletic and who looks in a certain way just because people start commenting it pulls that person completely down and it yeah. feels like okay now what next after this am i not good enough and from there i think the life goes on to a different tangent altogether and i think that's a, that's a very important thing what you're saying sanam saying especially starting a conversation by the way a person looks and uh you know a lot of us also tend to call our own friends saying ek kula ein samachara and then taklu and uh, oh, calling somebody no which is normal it is supposed to be funny yeah it <laughs> so. really happens in all these words that we call chabbi gundamma gunda all these things what really happens is it subconsciously hits the person's head saying i am not enough i am called and i am characterized based on how i look and these are real people who are talking to you about it will probably dwell quite a lot more on this and get into it but sanam thank you so much for bringing this up yaar no, it's not necessary that you should have a defect for our world to tell us saying you know what you're not good enough even if you are uh, 36 24 36 they will say no you should have been 35 and a half and 24 and a half so, so i think will go on to making comments like that yeah. and even if you have a certain shade on of your skin probably it'll again change saying no you don't have that same tone as yeah. deepika padukone you should have another tone change in the way that you look so what we're trying to say is do not compare and i think that's exactly what sanam is trying to say over to you jayanti what is your story be okay my story uh, sadly is not as inspirational as these two stories because my story of honoring or loving my body started very very late i can say it, it's a very new thing that i have started accepting the way i look the way my hair is the way my skin is the way everything on on me is initially yeah. when i was a kid i was a fat kid let's not uh, go into any kind of story that i was skinny and i was not this i was i was a fat kid i enjoyed eating 
I like teaching entire day. Anyone could see me that my entire job was to sit and eat. That that was my job, and I was I was enjoying it. But suddenly, when I went to school, I figured out, or rather, when I went to school, I figured out that there were certain uh, kids who were not interested in playing with me. They were like, "No, she's fat, she's chubby, so let's not bring her in the team." because they had this conception that i might not be able to run as fast as them i might not be able to play as good as them before even calling me on the playground before even asking whether can you do this or not they had this preconception that because of the weight that i was carrying i would not be able to do that so yeah. that's where i started feeling somewhat difficult about me i was like no maybe i'm not i am not perfect they yeah. all are perfect because they are going on the playground they are mixing and they are thinking with each other that means they are perfect whereas i am the misfit out here i don't belong to this place so yeah. i started separating myself away from group from crowd from friends and from everything and yeah. this went on for a long long time in school in college i was a good kid i was i am the topper of my batch in uh, when i was doing my msc as well as my, uh, my bachelor's i got a gold medal from the rashtrapati and everywhere i was academically good but whenever it came comes to the concept of representing or walking on the stage or representing any any kind of physical activity i was the last one to be picked at or i was the last one to get participated in that specific uh, genre where i what you weighing then if you don't mind me asking so that I people know. understand what we are trying to tell them Yeah, sure, sure. I was, I was, uh, I'm suffering from hypothyroidism, so that definitely bulks a person up. And I was near about eighty four to eighty five kgs. That was my weight. And right. then uh, I was happy. I was like happy. But then when when uh, I was looking into the mirror, I was like, okay, I can see a beautiful person. But when someone else was standing beside me in that mirror, they would be like, no, this is not good. This 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 dress doesn't look good on you. you are fat so you should not wear sleeveless these were the all different types of comments which yeah. were not just coming from friends from the people who are uh, so called helpers to buy you garments in the store they would be even commenting that ma'am you are this certain shape or this certain size so mm-hmm. we feel this would look good on you we don't feel that this western outfit or this sleeveless outfit or this deep neck outfit would look good on you you don't do this you don't do that and the yeah. second thing which added on this was i am quite tall i am 5 feet 6 inches i am quite tall so i i was like this this healthy big package which uh, and there were even comments of, uh, from my friends which were like you won't get a boyfriend who would be interested in getting involved with such a fat and such a tall person you yeah. won't get a eligible person ever in your life and i was like okay fine let's let's not think about that let's increase where i can do something so i was academically good but both wise i i tried to detach myself uh, social uh, interactions wise i tried to detach myself but then i figured out that the corporate world is not so accepting nowadays there is always a rat race and if i don't participate there's no one who is going to call me and say that knock 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 there is an opportunity for you please come and participate if i have to participate i yeah. have to participate so i asked a couple of friends and they were like go to the gym lose some weight and you will be like all 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 happy i'm like okay fine let me go to the gym i started going to the gym and i i, I have certain amount of ocd present in me so whichever activity i do i try to do it perfectly so when i started gymming yeah. i got so much into gymming that within uh, i can say 3 months i lost 15 kg of weight I love no. during no. months I used to work out for like four hours like a mad person hmm. and initial one and a half months was because I was not happy with my body and hmm. for the rest of the one and a half months it was like I was so much happy with the workout there was so much of endorphins being released there was so much of growth I can see in my body and I was like let's work out I can work out for four hours in a day that was hmm. my entire uh, stamina uh, that I was having. Right. and then then suddenly these group of people they were like if you see if, i don't know whether my hands are visible that last day also you should have seen there were bandages on my hands and it's completely battered now 
so these group of people these group of friends and aunties they started commenting and saying you know boys don't like such skinny girls they would want someone who has some amount of curvaceous <laughs> nature in them and i was like oh my god what happened what just happened these people said that i won't get anyone any eligible person in my entire life to spend my life with because i'm not a poor i'm not beautiful i'm not fit and now these people when i lost so much of weight they are commenting and they are saying you know no one would like to marry no one would like to even be friend a muscular girl and yeah. at that point of time so believe me i was 25 years old when this hit me in the head that no matter what i do there is no definition of being perfect, perfect. there is no definition of being beautiful if right. i am happy with whatever i am if i feel i am beautiful enough to carry this outfit if i feel that i am confident enough to fit in this event i should do it and let's not make any body any either a female body or a male body as a commodity to be you know transacted during this marriage thing no, no one should undergo this kind of headache that you have to be this to marry this or you have to earn this to marry this or you have to be this shade to marry that that is something which i was like vehemently against and when yeah. this started happening with me i was like okay now i got it mm-hmm. i am fit enough i am beautiful enough i am confident enough i don't want to transact my body shape as yeah. a barter system to get uh, to get uh, i should use the word hook to hook an eligible bachelor i never want to do that and yeah. that 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 happened last year unfortunately right. that happened last year and yeah. now i'm very happy with my body now i go i work out i lift weights i'm happy when i see my muscles and i'm sad when i don't when i can't lift up weight but i never go to the scale i never ever go to the scale to measure that okay what is my current weight because some people fail to understand that at least for females bloating is an issue Yeah. the moment i say i uh, change whatever food i am taking if i take much more amount of salt or sugar or carb my weight would fluctuate immediately and that is not the definition of being beautiful or perfect it is just an additive thing for your body that's it so that happened for me very very recent i can say jayanti that's so beautiful yeah i think more power to you for that entire journey that you've gone through and each of you are saying you know my story is not strong as the other person's story i think each of your stories are fantastic for all of us who are listening so there are two two things that we have to take away from what jayanti is saying one is you know i think what she's doing today is for her own self if she's losing weight is for her own self for her to feel beautiful for her to feel confident because she wants to do it for her own self the second thing that you know the main another the reason that i wanted to have this conversation is this i think a lot of us unknowingly are adding a lot of negativity to people's lives if you look at what jayanti is trying to say or what punita is saying or what sanam is saying it's probably not because they 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 you know people are doing it because they want to pull us down they're doing it because they think it's a good way of doing it they think they're trying to do good to us by saying you know you'll not get married if you don't get, uh, get you know lose yeah, your weight yeah. okay you look yeah. masculine then you'll not get married probably the way that we're thinking has to change so exactly. irrespective of who's listening here uh, if you're listening here because you are facing that issue great you have lessons to learn if you are here because you just want to uh, listen and understand from people's perspective one thing that all of us should take away is what are we talking to people consciously make that choice don't just talk randomly, randomly. it will affect people she is a gold medalist and she has done extremely well in her life i think academically she's always been successful irrespective of what she's picked up and getting a gold medal in bachelor's and in masters is not so easy but to hit a person's confidence of somebody of that caliber i don't know what as a society we are trying to do right what are we trying to achieve by making statements like this and where are we taking our world towards and especially in india it's a taboo saying yeah. if you have a certain weight then you will not get married okay you don't have a certain weight still you will not get married you're thin mm. still not get married i saw my sister just commenting and she was there in the last conversation where a lot of lot of them caller kulli 
or they call her saying sonakli because she's extremely thin and she's very very small and even then she had to face she is a phd she's almost clearing her phd she is going to be doing something fantastic in the ovarian cancer field in spite wow. of it today the world still says how did somebody get married to you you look so thin that's uh, all that matters right that's all yeah, that yeah, matters yeah. <laughs> i think you know that is what we are trying to address today yeah, saying yeah, exactly. where yeah. are we heading towards is that the way that we humans are allowed to communicate and probably bring in awareness of what conversations are not good conversations right and yeah. healthy conversations Yeah, and you know, I yeah, yeah. Yes, Anam, you were saying something. No, Kripa, the thing is that you 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 actually touched upon a very very strong point there. Thing is that the world the world around us um, it won't change overnight, right? Right. But one at a time. Yes. Yeah, we are having good conversations here. Initiatives like Project Nyan and this kind of conversation is just a the starting. We are. Not, it's not like something that we are going to change the world. But again, one at a time, right? Yeah. It's one battle at a time. on the other side i feel when we are looking at okay now that we are okay we have come to the body acceptance and and the the another thing is this body acceptance movement it believes that health is at every size regardless it doesn't have the size and health it doesn't have anything to do with fatness and fitness yeah. correct so that is what i think jayanti is also pointing out a very well uh, in in the sense when she was heavy when yeah. she was of a certain size she was still very healthy she was yeah. still uh, she still had a lot of stamina much better than somebody who would have been much thinner so it doesn't have anything and or a, a person who is very scrawny can still run a mile i mean without having to feel tired or uh, you know uh, things like so it doesn't have anything to do with that's one i think the second point is also to do with uh, your health you can incrementally increase your health right and improve your health i mean regardless of your size if yeah. you are working out and you are enjoying it and uh, and uh, you know so be it but if you are uh, working out and you are losing weight good for you good for you i mean if you are overweight and you've had health issues because of that uh, good for you if you're losing weight if you're working out and if you are improving your health and you are not losing weight it yeah. shouldn't matter Right. it just shouldn't matter because you are anyway improving your health so this thin line of body acceptance and being lazy because people often say like oh you are just being lazy by saying you know you are oh this is all body shaming and body yeah. positivity and all these things it's up to that individual what they want to do you know the diet culture and you know all this it's okay you know if you want to uh, if it's just about you know improving health and all these kind of things so what my i think i think coming back to that point is like you cannot change the whole world around you in fact you have to make yourself resilient you yeah. have to you have to probably i mean this is something that i've learned personally every unwelcomed comment i yeah. take it as an opportunity to learn that person's and my own sensitivity and yeah. that's one do i may not have a comeback answer at that point of time hmm. now i have because now we have learned yeah. right <laughs> but before i used to but i used to reflect yeah and if that person meant to me if that relationship i valued the relationship i would go back and confront and confront in such a way that it has affected me it's hurtful i think you shouldn't be saying that to me nor anybody and it is not nice you know just to make that person and that's the only way that's the only way you, be you, kind you. still you can just you know have that conversation and the more you get a chance to talk about it talk about it you know yeah. that's the only way when people it. exactly but and people now, yeah. now this conversation part, started right? between fat and fit now since i go to the gym regularly i can understand or you no matter who ever goes to the gym they would understand that there are two type of people who are entering the gym there yeah. would be one type of people those who are interested in making their body fit and there would be one type of people those who are interested in making their body thin or rather the accepted notion of fit that you are this shape yeah so the body standard right that body standard body yeah standard and yeah. the moment these people work out and the moment these people do something you can visualize that what is going on inside this person's body work out uh, i have seen people those who would go and instantly they would want result that no since i have started going to the gym i want an instant yeah. result within a month i want to lose 20 kg and 
these people are the people those who undergo this diet crazy diet these right. identity so plus some some combination of diet they would undergo and then they would fall sick and then they would come back to the original cycle and yeah. at the end of the day they would neither be happy with themselves nor they would be happy with the gym nor they would be happy with whatever they are eating and this cycle of negativity would keep on going Continue. so this is something which everyone should understand that you should never hit the gym because you want to get thin if you are interested in fitness if you want to do this kind of activities if you, if you are interested in lifting weights and running a mile then go to the gym gym is not the center to become thin overnight or to try crazy diets overnight gym is not I, the center to beautify you no not at all and this damages your body this damages you mentally also because you think you are paying money you think you are putting your body to all these crazy diet fads and everything so you should get a result but when you don't get the result when you rather fall sick it's like maybe i am not good maybe i did not do this maybe i i am in i am not capable of doing this kind of workout so i am falling sick and this this damages you physically as well as emotionally mental. and i don't yeah, want absolutely. anyone to anyone to go, go through that to, yeah it's yes. very it's, it's that very mental sad. yeah yeah even if you're speaking about you know body and the way body looks all of this is connected to our minds and i think that is Mind exactly it. what we are all trying to say saying you know don't put yourself under that pressure irrespective of what the world has to say and there's some fantastic comments which is also come in i'm going to read these comments up after, after one more round of questions keep your questions going if you have anything that you people want to share please go ahead and share i'll be more than happy to read this out to all these individuals of come in so uh, my next question my next follow up question to what we just recently spoke right i heard uh, punita sanam mentioning saying you know it's usually from the friends and family when it comes you she goes back and talks to that person and confronts and says saying uh, you know uh, this is not right this is how you can i i have you know i am not comfortable with what's happened now usually i think uh, a lot of us lose our confidence not mostly because of strangers but i think it's because of the close circle close that circle yes and Absolutely. the friends and the family members that's what affects us uh how do we manage ourselves what how what have you learned how do you manage yourself when people comment especially from our own close circle punita if somebody is commenting about me today what can i learn from your life where i can also start applying it into my life if somebody is my close family my my own friends and family is commenting how do i take it what should i do okay yeah see there are two kinds of people who comment hmm. one is who are born commenters <laughs> you can't change them they are born to comment anything on this earth you are thin they'll comment on you you are fat they'll comment on you you are tall they'll comment on you forget hmm. about persons they'll comment on non living things also oh my god this chair is not good hmm. so there are they are this set of people who are born commenters Mm. they i don't know what class of people they are mm. for those you cannot even attempt to change them just yeah. ignore them these kind of people will definitely be in your family circle mm. i have my closest uncle whom i cannot name but yeah. he is this born commenter so yeah. every time i used to go to his house he used to say oh my god you're still uh, short you haven't grown so i remember one day shouting back to him i had lost my patience one day and i said yeah i am short but mm. you are uh, 50 he was 50 years that time you're yeah. 50 and still you are super fat you have never tried to lose your weight yeah for me i have tried my best to increase my height but you have never tried to lose your weight <laughs> so what do you want to say so like yeah. this there are these born commenters for whom you should not waste your time convincing them or trying to educate them but okay. definitely there are the set of people whom you can try to sit with them like how sanam told mm. sit and talk and explain to them what has happened to you there is a reason for everything like i am short because of a medical condition called hypochondroplasia yeah this this is not dwarfism it mm. is called short limb dwarfism where only my limbs are affected my yeah. head and my body structure is absolutely normal mm. only thing my hands and legs are little short compared to others Yeah. so every person has a reason behind what has happened to that person in their life hmm. so sit with that person and explain to them that it's really not good to comment like this randomly it hmm. will hurt the person hmm. if this when you explain like this if that person understands it and stops commenting it is superb 
but right. if that person again tries to commit the same thing with someone else you mm-hmm. cannot do anything what best you can do is sit and educate yeah. but there is no point as soon as they comment if you go home and like start thinking that oh shit my uncle only told like this that yeah. means i'm not good enough i'm not good enough to see the world if yeah. you go on thinking it negatively it is going to affect you you are the loser no right. outside person will not come and sit with you and console you it, right. every time i have come out of my shell on my own believe me no yeah. one has sat next to me and told no punita you are perfect excluding wow. my mom of course yeah. my mom yeah. was always there yeah. outside person will never come sit next to you and tell no you are perfect it yeah. is you who has to get up and tell no i am good enough and i am going to challenge the person who has commented on me right. so when it comes from a family person two options ignore bluntly yeah. or second option please sit with that person and educate him that this is not the way you talk to a person or comment on a- any any topic it can be anything commenting on uh, nose commenting i see random lady sitting in yeah. marriage hall and commenting yeah. oh the girl is shorter compared to boy <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. the boy's nose is uh, big yeah. oh. why, why is why is it required <laughs> Yeah. first of all yeah by commenting will that uh, person's nose grow right or uh, suddenly will the person become thin it is not going to help yeah so please stop yeah. this random comments and yeah. uh, i don't know what what i can say about this yeah i, I, I think that i wanted to just a minute sana mm-hmm. but another thing that i wanted to actually check with you is you know let's say one part you said how to how to probably confront and take it forward right what can you do about it but let's say our own close family members are commenting about us whom we go back to reflect and somebody who's very close to us it's is itself putting me down then how do i manage myself like you know how do i say probably this what this person is saying is not contributing positively to my life i might not be able to see it like that because you know these are my closest of friends these are my closest of family members i might start assuming as a teenager or somebody who is going yeah. through this phase i might start assuming saying no what this person is saying is correct i have to change otherwise i'm not good enough so what what was your thought process punita what is it that you were talking to yourself if you can probably you know communicate that that will be very nice for us to learn from you yeah every time someone commented on me i used to sit in front of the mirror or sit in front of something and talk to myself talking to myself started very early for me i think at the age of 10 or 12 i used to really talk to myself just like i talk to you or someone else yeah. i'm like why why did that person comment on me hmm. where am i wrong am i not perfect am i not uh, coming to the criteria like how others are normal what mm. what is wrong in me all these questions it used to come in my mind and yeah. every time this com- comes into my mind i used to say no stop stop these negative thoughts i have so much of positivity in me what yeah. i have others don't have like i have a beautiful voice i love singing random person on the road can't sing yeah. i can sing yeah. so like yeah. i have beautiful uh, family with me there are so many out there who don't have a family yeah. and i have a, a pair i mean two good parents who are giving me what i want in life like mm-hmm. i ask them exactly. get me something mm-hmm. they i mean with the best of their ability they get me so when mm-hmm. i have so much of positive things within me and around me why mm-hmm. should i sit and think that somewhere i am less compared to others Yeah, so this yeah. is how i came out of it of course yeah. i have cried so many times yeah. i have yeah. literally uh, fought with uh, my parents yes uh why yeah. did you uh, you know am i there online yeah uh, you are there we can hear you, you can turn on your video i think you turned off your video by mistake how do i go back i think uh, no problem go ahead and speak punita go ahead go ahead yeah that's what every time someone commented you know it used to pull me down definitely but then yeah. i used to sit sit alone definitely i have not spoken to someone else i used yeah. to sit alone and i used to realize that no that person who has commented will not help me in my life if i sit and just brood upon it rather let me take it as a challenge and prove him wrong that i can do what best i can do in my life so this is how i have come out of it to pali i think you know for all of us who are listening to this if in case you're struggling the best part is like what punita is mentioning please go ahead and take that time to yourself to have a conversation and 
like I've, I I don't know if you watched the self love video that I've put out there if there is one person that you're responsible for in this entire world you can say it is for my kid it is for my husband for my dad no you are only responsible for your own self that is what god has gifted you your body your mind and your soul for you have to take care of it and firstly become friends with your own soul it could be talking to yourself like what punita mentioned it could be journaling it could be anything please make sure that you don't put down yourself and take yourself onto the uh, onto a journey where you can go back and have a conversation and you can exactly. trust yourself with what you're exactly. trying to say yeah. and thank you so much for that punita i think you gave both the things that you mentioned about how to manage when somebody else comments and how to manage my own self when a comment comes is fantastic thank you so much for that the thank same you. question over to you sanam so uh, how does one manage when somebody is commenting and how does one manage when somebody uh, comments what do i tell to people see i think it's over i like i was saying it's over time that you realize how much uh, in what scale and what depth it affects us i think that's what you need to understand uh if it doesn't affect you well fine no problem but if it is wrong if it, it doesn't matter whether it it affects you or not but if it's wrong and you hear the same thing happening to somebody close to you or in your office or in your family to a younger person who is very naive to this uh speak up you know if it, even if it doesn't affect you you think that that person is wrong what what what's the need of commenting like what when it is what is the need of commenting on somebody's body it's just plain bad manners to comment on somebody's body i think yeah. people should understand that bit first you know that it is mad manners to the first thing like you know again going back to uh, you know uh, when we meet a person a family or friend after many many years or many days together now that the covid situation the yeah. first thing that they notice about you oh you've lost weight oh you've put on weight you know <laughs> and i i remember one such instance when you were talking about it punita yeah. about your uncle i remember i i used to loathe going back and visiting some of the particular houses who used to have like you know very uh, contained comments for us we know exactly what they are going to tell you know you you always have a fear right mm-hmm. when you were a child and then you were an adolescent and especially when you're married and all that in front of your in-laws and all these kind of comments and this person will definitely comment on this so that that aunt it was an aunt in my case i went to that aunt's house and it was uh, i remember she told me oh you've put on so much of weight i don't think you'll ever lose weight this is what her comment was a very typical i facing this every year in and year out and then at that point i was like okay i have to tell you know all that while i should hold back thinking that it was disrespectful to talk against her it's disrespectful to go back to so i just you know i just i don't know what went through i just swirled around and i'm like really you only found only my uh, fatness as a problem nothing else right so then that's fine with me you know and she not get it at the first i hope she got the message that you know is that the only thing that you saw after seeing me after many months yeah even after this even recently when i go to my office and then the everybody there was, there was a very close friend of and now again going back to how i deal with comments yeah. uh, close friend of mine the first thing she says she's happy for me her intention is very very naive and she's yeah. like oh wow you've lost so much of weight you know you've lost yeah. weight and then she goes on to then name body parts she's yeah. like oh you lost weight from there and you lost weight from here and i go on to chuckle of course and i'm like i'm like really i mean i never had a problem i never had a problem with me before or after yeah. so why would that but because she's close to me i had the freedom to you know talk to her i hope that gets them thinking that it is yeah. plain wrong and plain bad manners to you know talk about it yeah and yeah. also about comparing yourself with others hmm. i feel what i've learned over time is if you're comparing compare with yourself Yeah. if you are in a path to improve something whether it is improving health yeah. or uh, improving whatever goal you want okay yeah. whether as long as it's not affecting you mentally just compare with yourself how good you were yesterday how good you were a month ago 6 months ago or a year ago just compare with that you know then co- the the problem happens now we have children right mm. the problem happens when we start telling and comparing them oh you know look at you you need to you need to run faster mm. but then why not rephrase that and tell okay, oh why don't you you know i think i think you did a fantastic job acknowledge the positive correct and tell you know what you can push yourself you know last last month you remember you were just here you were just yeah. running 100 meters today you're running 150 meters you yeah. know so yeah. these kind of things are the little things that we can self improve and also inculcate that positive message uh, with people around us not just children even people around us the old even parents 
even our own parents they don't understand when they comment on somebody when they are the aunt and the uncle in that context yeah. you know and you're here and you know that they're commenting on you it's like do you even need that comment about their clothing or you know how they dress or how they talk it's okay yeah. it's them let them do if they're happy doing that let them do that you know yeah. i think that is what i think how we can deal with these comments you know without burning bridges if yeah. that person does not mean anything just don't do anything yeah fine right. but uh, but yeah i think i think but we have to speak up that's my message yeah. we have to speak yeah. up yeah if it doesn't so happen it makes a lot yeah. of sense in what you're saying sanam so what you're saying is you don't have to answer to everybody mm-hmm. allow them to comment if they want to comment that's their choice unless it does not affect you and if it is mm-hmm. affecting you then obviously put down your foot and say you know what this is not okay this is not what you're supposed to be doing like what yeah. sanam mentioned go ahead and do all of that and uh, for all the people who are listening to this conversation i think let's let's all decide today saying we will not ever comment about another person's looks or the physical appearance because that's a private composition it is not for Correct. the public to go ahead and decide or for you and me to go ahead and decide or for anybody to go ahead and tell this is okay or this is not okay and there is no definition of what is okay what is not okay like i remember there was a time that size 0 was okay then again the same people went ahead and said no not size 0 is not okay you're too thin you have to put on weight so i think it just keeps transforming and yeah. this is a beautiful gift that we've all got from god so let's just embrace it and say you know what i'm not going to comment about anybody else's uh, body neither allow myself to have a bad co- uh, talk to myself and like what sanam was mentioning i think that positive talking is so much important in irrespective of which topic that we are talking about please be positive to yourself and talk well and uh, there's one fantastic person i think another real hero who has joined us on uh, youtube uh, and she has commented this i really want to read this out to all four of you yes yes uh, this is from leela shaju and she says uh, i was 105.8 kg in 2015 and i'm 66 kg today i never allowed anyone to hurt me with their words i got a, ba- a bariatric done because i was advised by my doctor who was treating me for a good 15 years and i'm proud to say that today and uh, th- this person has been treated for diabetes for 15 years and she says my goal was to beat diabetes and that was a full stop i did it just because i wanted to do it and nothing uh, you know there was no other person who could exactly. who was commenting and she allowed those comments to get on to her head i think they were commenting but i think she what she tries to say is she did not allow anybody to hurt her and kudos to you leela shaju i think you know you oh, are absolutely warrior. absolutely yeah, yeah and thank you so much for telling us this story and for you know sharing this with us and this shows that the world is made out of heroes right so each one of us have such fantastic lessons i have learned from you leela ir- irrespective of your year as a judge or uh, i mean as a guest or no i'm sure you know the next time i put on weight or the next time i am fighting something i will remember what you have really written here you did this for yourself and fighting diabetes is not a joke everybody in the house today you know there is at least one or two people who who in the household has diabetes and thank you so much for sharing that lesson with us over to you jayanti and then i'll read the rest of the questions so if you can go ahead and tell us your story okay so How regarding comments yes uh, i am a bengali and in bengali there is a tradition that during the durga puja we exchange uh, clothing gifts uh, that we should give and take and all So I remember there is one aunt of mine who came and said that you know you have put on so much of weight that instead of giving you some uh, salwar kameez or something I would give you a sheet of cloth and you can cut it and make it out of your own size because I don't think any any of the stores would have something which fits you and I was like okay fine and as a kid at that point of time I was in class 5 or 6 Mm-hmm. what i did at that point of time was that i stopped going to her place that was the best thing i could do because in india we again have two two different things first thing is that it is okay by the elders to comment on your body Correct. some that they consider that it is their birth right that if you are fat if you are tall if you are thin if you are dark if you are dusty if you are fair they do have this inherent right to comment on your Correct. body whatever you do they would be uh, they it's within their rights it's within their limits and yeah. second thing that is wrong i feel in this type of conversations is that yeah. you cannot retaliate back you cannot fight back you cannot even verbally say a word because then people would be saying he or she is a senior is a elder 
so you that, you don't have the right to say that whatever that person is saying is saying out of the goodness of their heart or out of the love which they cater for you so this is something which is i think everyone should stop now i am old enough and now i can say that yeah. you know if you say all these terms or if you say all these things you are basically not insulting me because i come from a very religious family so i know where to pull the strings and i say if you are insulting me if you find something is wrong with me is flawed with me you are basically insulting the one who has created me i am not born out of my own i have not molded my own body i did not ta- start taking clay from the some place and start putting it on my body and making it any kind of any our glass shape or any tear shape it is somewhat i am born with and if you are religious enough it comes from someone who has created both me and you so if you think that you can use this words and disrespect me basically you are disrespecting his creation and at the end of the day you are disrespecting him there is nothing that you are doing to me so yeah. this is something i found that at least in people those who believe in the context of god mostly elders do they do take it up quite seriously because no matter if you say verbally something or other that you know this is not right this is not the way you are supposed to treat a person how small how young or how old that person is they would be like we are just making a normal comments why are you so thin skinned why are you Correct. so so sensitive yeah. and sentimental you get offended there would be ample number of people around everyone saying all these things you are becoming very touchy feely and all these type of we are random nonsense they would start saying out so yeah. one thing which i uh, ensure to say is that if you try to disrespect me you have to understand i am i am not my own creator i have been created by the same power by the same entity who has created you so if you think you are disrespecting me you are disrespecting him so there is no point in praying there is no point in asking for his blessings because you have disrespected his creation and the second thing which i do is that i absolutely ignore now this ignoring thing is 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 it's easier to say compared it is done you can't ignore certain family you can't ignore certain relatives so yeah. what what i do is that there is one thing from bhagavad gita which i have taken but the context in bhagavad gita is bit different is different it says that if you find that your relatives or your close uh with whom you share up even a blood relationship they are doing something wrong as a first moral step would be to detach from that person that is the first step towards being morally and principally good and okay so now if someone does this and doesn't understand that whatever he or she is doing is wrong is not correct is is a way of insulting someone i detach and i keep that that particular saying or that particular thought in my mind that i am not detaching because i hate that person or that person hates me i am detaching because this is principally the first step i should do towards a happy life towards a healthy life these are the two things which i do apart from that i there is no point in always retaliating back or talking back they don't understand they they think it is within their it, it is within their yes it's within their birth right to comment they just think it and now if it's a if it's a close friend of mine or if it's a peer of mine and if he or she comes and says i say do i go to your house and ask why do you have a double xl bed and why not a single bed and why not two cots if i don't do that because your house is your own personal and private property this is my personal and private property so please don't come and tell me i yeah. yeah once i lost weight i even had a friend who would be coming like this oh you are now okay i can hold this i can hold this or oh, let me touch it is solid and all so i say please see this is this is private i don't do anything to your home i don't go to your home and say the bed sheet doesn't look good it doesn't suit with the decor let me just change it so you can't also come and say your dress doesn't look let's just change it so that is the third comment which i usually have or that's the third arrow in my quiver that's all amazing my god jayanti who are you yeah i mean such <laughs> profound things that you yeah. actually mentioned now uh, for <laughs> all of us who are listening if you are commenting about somebody else i think i don't even want to repeat what she said i want you people to actually go back and listen to it from her own voice this recording is going to be here go ahead and re listen to every word that she mentioned because that's 
that's absolutely the truth i think she nailed it this is exactly yeah. what we were trying to say throughout yeah. uh, the conversation absolutely yeah. yeah and then the second thing that i want you also also to observe is she gave you a instance of somebody commenting to her when she was in fifth standard and we think fifth standard kids or younger age kids do not understand anything and today she is at least 10 to 15 years older she's moved out of that experience and of that age but she still completely remembers that experience and she can talk about it so irrespective of which age group whom are you talking to please be aware because this affects yeah. people don't just make random comments just because you want to go ahead and do it thank you so much for all the things that you shared jayanti i'm going to now take out some few questions for you uh, people from the audience out here uh, yeah i think leela mentioned saying she's very happy that all of you uh, you know acknowledged her uh, process she's very happy about it dr deepa ayer says holy Bob, holy bible says your body your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you and is a gift from God. The logic is you live in your body. It is your home, your temple, and it means you respect your body. You should start doing that. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Deepa, for mentioning this. And uh, I think there's another question, beautiful question, which had come. Uh, this is from Vivek again, uh, Punita. So, uh, Punita, this question is for you. He says, uh, has anyone hesitated to be your patient? And if so, how do you manage that situation? Have you ever gone through something? Yeah, like that? initially, definitely, I've had those experiences where uh, my patient come, used to come and tell, I don't want Dr. Punita. She's weird looking. I have heard this comment. Hmm. She's weird looking compared to other doctors. Can you uh, put another doctor to me? I've had these comments, definitely. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, by the time, by, by that age, you know, I had already become a stone heart. <laughs> so I used to uh, not care. Okay, you are not lucky to get treated by me. You go get it done from another person. And <laughs> um, I still remember same thing happened to one of my patients. And uh, he went, he literally rejected my hospital and went to another hospital and uh, got treatment done. And he yeah. came back to me after three years telling yeah. that I made a mistake. I went somewhere else. Uh, that person was not even friendly. He didn't educate me. Can you please redo the treatment? So <laughs> that time, I, I really had so many dialogues to give it back. But then, uh, it's okay. I, I just smiled and I said, yeah, yeah, please come. I'll take care. Yeah. So yeah, it has happened to me. It has happened to me. Yes. Thank you so much for that, Punita. Thank you for that brave, uh, you know, explanation that you gave us. There's another question. Any of you can take this. Uh, this is uh, this question goes on to saying, what about body shaming of the guys? Uh, as now also, people say tall, dark, handsome is like a norm. Girls are like, I want tall boy. I want a muscular, manly looking guy. Why is there a stereotype? What is your perspective from an opposite gender? Why uh, do you guys want to comment about this? <laughs> okay, I, I think, have a yeah. story to share. Yeah, uh, sure. This was there on the social media a couple of months ago, I believe. There was this girl who hmm. gave out a... I think it was on Twitter or Facebook. She she uh, made a status and it was it went on like that that she's very pretty, she's very beautiful, and mm -hmm. she wants a bachelor or she wants to get married with someone whose annual income is more than hundred crores. That is what her ideology of, and she wants to barter her beautiful body in with this uh, with this conversation. And I don't know about the authenticity of this story, but it was yeah. there on social media yeah. and. Uh, to that particular tweet, I think Mr. Mukesh Ambani replied and he said that, yeah. you know, if you, I, I am a person whose annual income is more than 100 crores, but mm -hmm. I would not be interested in the least sense of the word interested to get married to you because looks are depreciative assets. That is the word that he used. Being an economist, he said that look, if you are just basing everything on how does a person look that is a depreciative asset money merit uh, even not money i i should say the money making mind not just money money can also get lost if you don't have the brain to do the business at all so merit and character are two assets which never ever go down in value those are not depreciative assets those are appreciative assets no matter how long I live, this asset will keep on adding and adding up. Whereas look, 
muscular body and all this uh, particular height and everything those are all depreciative who is to say that after 15 years that that particular boy would would have the muscles uh, after 15 years that tall 5 feet 6 inch or 6 foot boy would not stoop down there is no no way to guarantee you all this so why should you waste your entire life and entire journey of life with another person on something which whose value goes down each and every second so oh, yeah. i know there is a lot of lot of talk regarding a uh, uh, ideal physique for boys but again i think if there are people who think that boys also should fit into an ideal physique mm. they are starting the conversation at the very very wrong foot yeah. i know for for a moment for some time it does look good it does feel good to be photographed next to a very handsome person but at the end of the day you are not just there to be photographed with you are spending your life with if there yeah. is no balance there is no sync that physique that that tall dark handsome broody nature is not going to come anywhere near your happiness that's right. what i feel more I, i think uh, yeah. i think you're nailing everything yeah <laughs> with her stories with her oh, stories oh, you were so good <laughs> <laughs> I was just thinking, you know, I I don't think I don't think to, just to address that question. Yes, yes, I know. I don't think this session had anything to do with only women. Yeah, unfortunate that all four of us are women. Yes. But body shaming at no point we mentioned that mm-hmm. it was only with women. Correct. You know, and men also go through it. We are not denying that. Nobody denies that. And it's not only body shaming. Like I was, I started saying baldness. That's another thing that's very common. commonly uh, the picked up on or or feminine nature you know so now we are getting into another topic altogether you know all this is like heavily body shamed and the, the 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 whole issue is for men it's not okay to whine right. let alone cry yeah you know they you know they have to be very macho about it even if they get commented on their body they have to be very macho about it they have to be very strong about it you right. know that's another battle that uh, men are uh, fighting all together yeah Yeah. I would I would I would also say I would also say the flip side of it as yeah. much as people don't judge me for being fat I yeah. would shouldn't judge people for being for focusing on how beautiful they want to be yeah. or you know how thin they want to be oh, it's yeah. up to you yeah. as long as it doesn't affect again your mental health and yeah. as long as that doesn't affect like what Jayanti was saying that it doesn't affect your life and your life decisions are not based on something very I mean that you understand Yeah. And one important thing that I would like to raise is like maybe good for us over many years, or I think most of them who I've spoken to, it took them years to uh, to retaliate, to battle out, to understand all these body issues and how to combat it and all that. But now we are in a world if you are not able to do that by yourself, it's okay. Seek right. professional help. Ask yeah. for help. It's okay. It's just yeah. just normalize that when you get a flu, you go to a doctor. Yeah. So normalize if you are having an eating disorder or you have a problem with not feeling good enough and that is affecting you. Seek the profession. Go to a go to a, a therapist or go to a mental person, a mental doctor who can help you with that. Right. Uh, uh, you know, and and that that should be no, that's another thing that should 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 be normalized. Right. Yeah. I and think it makes so much sense in what you're saying, Sanam. So uh, to uh, Niladri, because I know that question came from you. So uh, Niladri, we did have a question for sure to ask about saying is body shaming only a women problem? We totally believe it's not. It just happened that you know we have three g- women on this uh, uh, guest list who are here, but we acknowledge whatever that you're saying, and that's exactly what Sanam was mentioning right now. and i think it's a two way street right so it's not just it's not just one side it's it's a two way street it's just making sure that you get the right person to walk the journey with you and if somebody is judgmental based on the looks then i think you are on the wrong footing already so probably that's not the place that you have to be in and like what sanam is mentioning i think in case you're feeling low after all of this and you still think that you need help please seek professional help this is only a eye opener that we're trying to show you always go ahead and take professional help uh, there are some more questions and some more thoughts here so i'm going to quickly read this out for your people any of you have any questions for them please go ahead and put it out here i'm going to uh, quickly take those questions as well uh, 
Arun Kumar, uh, Arun, Arun, Arun was a guest last time. So Arun says more power to you all, and he's very happy being a part of this conversation. Uh, Shrinivas B says great talk, uh, very inspiring, and he's very inspired. Nino Sajan says very inspiring. Each of your stories is very good. Ajit says hello to all of you, and uh, I think Unnati says uh, Punita, she's very, su- she's super proud of you, and she's going to change her. Thank you. And. Uh, I think this, yeah, there is uh, Ma- 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 Madhurya, Madhurya, I'm sorry if I called you wrong. Uh, she says, hi, Punita, I've seen you from your childhood, always seen your confident, bubbly, full of energy, Thank a true you. inspiration to all of us. And Thank you. I, I'm a part of that person who's also been inspired by you, Punita. Thank you for who you are. Right. And Nice. Sal says, uh, you know, he's very inspired by you, uh, Jayanti. He says, you're a very strong girl. <laughs> And uh, I think my sister has mentioned quite a lot of comments. She, uh, she firstly says she is Punita's junior. We studied in the same school Whoa. and she's always learned from you. And she's uh, very happy that you all spoke about both weight loss and weight gain, because I think even weight gain is something that people push for because she's had her own uh, journey with that. And uh, Nikila Anand says, one of the most enthusiastic and inspirational people I've met. Uh, and she says, uh, kudos to you, Punita. She's very happy. Hey, Nikki. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah. And then I think Gopal says the session was, Gopala says the session was very good. He is able to learn with us. And uh, yeah, where are the other questions? Let me quickly see if there's any other questions. Yeah, Argya Day says, he says hello to all of you. And uh, then, 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 okay. Uh, I think, yeah, mostly it's hellos and hi. So I will quickly take the questions <laughs> first and then probably, you know, uh, yeah, we'll come back to it in some uh, due course of time for all of you. My third question, um, you know, in the interest of time, my most important question that I want all of you to address right now is uh, if you can talk about saying now that I know, okay, this is this is the problem that I have. I've realized saying, you know, yes, people are commenting. Now I know how to combat, how to take care of it from the outside. And I know I have to stand for myself. I've learned that from all three of you. Now, this is where my main problem is. I go stand in front of the mirror. All that I see is defects, right? I start because I think it's been, I can't change overnight. I've always been seeing this and I've always been looking at the mirror and saying, this is not enough. That is not enough. This is how I'm feeling. How is it that I start accepting my body? What is the beginning? Where where does it start from that I start saying it's okay for me to be like this? If I want to change, then I change. But how do I start accepting myself? Uh, Like, you know, how do I say this is enough for me? Because I think as humans, we are very selfish and selfishness in various different forms. But one of the selfishness is also I want to be like somebody. The body form also we are selfish. So how do I come out of that selfishness and say this is beautiful? This is enough for me. Punita, over to you. Okay. Yeah. So firstly, I cannot say please stop seeing the mirror. (laughs) That is the one thing which we always do, which we do it as soon as we get up. I think first thing we see is the phone, mobile phone, WhatsApp messages. Second is we see the mirror. Right. So we cannot stop uh, seeing the mirror or stop uh, weighing our weight on the weight scale or whatever like that. Hmm. But what I would say is at least the other two, the Saddam and Jayanti, had an opportunity to lose their weight. But in my case, I had no choice to increase my weight. Mine is a genetic uh, chromosomal defect. Yeah, Uh, yeah, of course, I had so many uh, people suggesting go swim, uh, go do uh, push-ups, pull-ups. I still remember there was one uh, grandpa who used to come and pull my legs every day. He's like, I'll pull your leg, you'll become tall. So uh, at least those other two uh, guests on the show had an opportunity to uh, reduce or gain weight or that's a factor where you can work on. But in my case, I never had an opportunity to do something where I can increase my weight. Till now, there is absolutely no treatment for hypochondroplasia uh, to to the people outside since I'm from a medical background. There is no treatment for hypochondroplasia. You cannot take growth hormone injections or you can't do anything for it. So when I realized that you cannot do anything about it, why should I sit and crib? Let me accept the way I am. See, I I think I remember telling this quote for someone. There are 90-95% of people outside there who do not like the way how I am. 
but i am 200% confident that i don't care about what others think so this is what i am and this is how i have accepted myself so you go out confidently and you tell the world that if you want to accept me the way i am you please go ahead if you have a problem with my appearance please choose another person to talk there are other people out there whom whoever whoever comes to your bracket of perfection in looks or height or whatever it be you, you are free to choose that person but this is how i am and i have accepted myself so uh, and yeah i think people should actually stop seeing the mirror 100 times in the day that yeah. will actually demotivate you so uh, you are all of us are beautiful souls and yeah. there is nothing called perfection as a dentist i'm saying you there is no perfect teeth there is mm. no perfect smile there is definitely 0.5% or 10% discrepancy in every person so mm. when everyone has their own imperfection why should you sit and think about it that i am not perfect yes i am also not perfect other person is also not perfect let us yeah. work towards it if possible let us achieve it in this life yeah. like by doing gymming yeah. and other things if you can decrease your weight or increase your weight or increase your height seek the he- take the help of medical professionals counselors uh, people out there are definitely helpful approach the right kind of people who will increase your confidence and give solution for your issues what you have but please don't sit and think negative that oh my god something is wrong with me yeah. that's what uh, i have done in my life i hope uh, others out there who are fa- who are facing issues like me also do the same Yeah. No, that's beautiful, Punita. Punita, if you can also address this, because you said, if I can go and take help, then go and take help. A lot of times what happens is, you know, let's say I'm not happy with the way I look. Okay. Uh, let's say, let's not just say look, probably I'm not okay with my complexion. The moment I know that I can go and take help, I will start getting into all kinds of cosmetics, or I will also go to an extent of saying I will do probably a plastic surgery on a certain thing. So what what defines where can i go take help and what should i really work on and what is okay for it to be the way the way that it is just there so how do i know that punita okay yeah so again seeking help is a very big thing now hmm. in this present world everything has become marketing so Correct. the minute you go with a problem telling that uh, you as you said a complexion problem yeah. there are n number of dermatologists who tell that you can put this you can put that you, there are uh, other uh, yeah. products out there in the market who try to market their products and uh, help you try to help you out and in turn make their business uh, a profitable <laughs> thing so again it depends on you that what do you want to achieve in your life what mm. is your level see uh, i mean i always feel that I, when i was young mm. i used to never dream that i want to become aishwarya rai i never ever dreamt that i used to watch movies mm. i am also a movie uh, what to say freak mm. i have also seen heroines i love madhuri dikshit uh, i used to dance like her but i never ever uh, thought that i should become that person mm. you are what you are so when you accept what you are no you are already 100% no, so right. there is nothing that you have to reach that 120% or 200% or something so that's what i feel you seek help from a person who can listen to what you are feeling yeah i am not saying seek help from the people outside there like cosmetic people or uh, mm-hmm. medical practitioners or something Se- uh, seek help from the nearest person out there like your best friend or your mom i always feel mom is the safest person to go and talk to your problems yeah uh, but again i request all the moms to please support your kids you know because uh, you're the first person a child approaches yeah. so if you people support your kids no nothing else is needed for the child right. believe me an uh, outsider absolutely. can comment anything but if a mom is there to support the child that child will grow up and as an amazing soul Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Uh, every mom out there please support your kid whatever the kid has uh, whatever issue the kid has please talk to the kid and make sure that the kid is confident enough to face the world yeah uh, that's what i request every parent you know and my mom has done that i'm very thankful yeah and i think that's a true inspiration a true inspirational story of you, whoever you are today i think there's a lot that your mom's influence is on you punita and we've seen that throughout 
the age that you've grown it's not that overnight that you've become like this i've seen that in you for a very very long time decades now Thank so you, Sa- sanam over to you on the same question yeah. if you can probably you know share saying how do i know how do i befriend myself and accept myself in front of the mirror you know i think i think you have to accept that body talk it begins and ends with you and that's where it starts right mm-hmm. so it's all in the head so it might be easy for people to come over it it might take years it might take these week weeks or you might need to seek professional help to come over uh, body issues or uh, issues uh, com- uh, feeling that you are not good enough i mean that's yeah. fine but i feel if some practical tips uh, i think that has helped me and mm-hmm. i feel that i i can actually tell my children as well about is uh, choose your friends and family wisely it it, it has a lot to do okay. with that i think yeah. i think i think i think at some point at some point i'm talking up to of course if that a person if that person is very toxic before you define tox, toxicity uh, on how that how toxic the relationship is getting yeah. uh, you should think whether you need this person in your life does it mean and you, re- you really do so many things to keep this person and and yet nothing is happening that's yeah. where you draw that line on the sand that's where you draw the line and now that we all are on social media and our feeds i think we should uh, follow and see more of positive people and yeah. positivity is also defined by you that's why i say it ends and starts with you if you are a person who wants to do a lot of plastic surgeries on you so be it Un- unless unless it doesn't affect your mental health that no matter what you do you're never happy it shouldn't reach that Yeah. I wouldn't judge I shouldn't judge or I shouldn't I shouldn't judge a person who wants to do that or or for that matter Punita if there's somebody who wants to become an Aishwarya Rai or on the other side when you're actually trying to grow uh, whether it is look wise or your body or it might be career wise you might be looking up to a person who might be totally unnatural standard and unachievable standard but sometimes that helps people grow in whatever ways it is but what the the thing where you draw the line is when it affects you mentally hmm. and i think that's the first thing so you you kind of focus focus on creating that sphere of influence around you whether it is your colleagues or your friends and people who actually value you who mean to you like if things you know sometimes you get affected and then probably you can validate that that's one and two i think at some point we should stop seeking acknowledgement uh at some point like whatever you do there will be somebody who don't like it or who don't accept it for yeah. whatever reason right but at some point we should stop seeking acknowledgement seeking recognition for what you are doing yeah yeah so i think that also takes time again it is doesn't come easily it doesn't come easily i think i think it also starts that's where i'm i'm also reading a lot of you know these kind of positive reinform reinforcement in parenting and uh, you know where where you go on you know like uh, the other day my friend was also speaking about it uh, she was saying like you know we we are actually teaching children instant gratification where oh you finish this work i'll give you a chocolate you finish this work i'll take you to the park you do this uh, i'll do that for you you know you you make up your bed uh, uh, today we'll go out making yeah. your bed and making your room is a normal thing it doesn't need a gratitude it doesn't need any sort of recognition or acknowledgement i think that's what branches out as from childhood when you grow to an adult that is where you know you are seeking recognition you're seeking acknowledgement you're constantly not happy your con no matter what you do you are not you know feeling good enough yeah. i think i think that's a second thing you know that you know you stop seeking uh, this thing and of course of course believe in your pause like if you're struggling to find you feel like all these comments are affecting you taking you down i think you have to consciously make an effort whether it's with or without medical help or psychological help yeah. you need to find out what your strengths are you need to find and get get people to talk to you about your strengths your positive like punita like exactly whatever you've gone through it's, you are born with this right you are yeah. born with whether you are able to treat it or not treat it you believe in your strengths and you have you have worked upon your strengths to grow yeah and that's what matters you know that's what matters and today you're imparting such a beautiful message that way 
yeah so i think i think it's all about that i think these are my three three go to my are the practical tips you know that yeah, helped me i'm sure you nailed it and it's like on the bullseye sanam a, a lot of it i think I comes know. from that instant gratification like you really mentioned that's why we want somebody else to keep telling us saying we are enough we are good enough we did this right because we have always been trained like that so probably it's it's time to reflect on reinventing mm. itself and also another point that you mentioned about saying you know how much is okay and how much do you accept yourself your own self love i remember charlie who had come in as a guest uh, in one of our sessions where we spoke about self love he he went ahead and elaborated on the entire thing in fact he said you know how much is self love how much goes beyond from self love and goes towards saying you know uh, your arrogance so you you need to also draw a line that side one is draw a exactly. line from this side and then you know the other part is how to draw a line from the other side really if any of you are listening to this and you are really interested to cultivate that please watch that session on self love because i think all those three guests spoke beautifully well they spoke not from a body perspective but from mental health perspective saying uh, how can Uh, how can one start accepting and loving themselves and also how to draw a boundary from love to arrogance, arrogance. and say you know what this is what i'm going to draw a line i will not make myself more important and become an yeah. arrogant fool i will know where to draw a line mentally so i think yeah. that was a fantastic input that you gave sanam over to you okay. on this jayanti so how what do you have to say about this part of accepting oneself from your own life lesson okay accepting myself or accepting anyone whoever is uh, that is again as uh, sanam pointed out is a very very personal conversation i don't think that one should allow the body related talk to be influenced by anyone else or to be even had with anyone else body is my it is my personal it private and it is one of the most powerful tools i am born with as yeah. i mentioned in my right up so one should at the first step again as uh, punita ma'am also pointed out that parent or mother should take the first step in building a wall and protecting the child as the first uh, barrier because they are innocent they are unaware of the fact that which is positively uh, reinforced which is a positive reinforcement and which one is a negative reinforcement right. as soon as the parents or the mothers who so ever are there they understand this and they can shield their child and they make the uh, baby understand that body is something which is your own it is your private and personal so you should not allow anyone to have any kind of conversation which deals with this if it's yeah. your body it's your conversation with your body if you wake up one day and you feel like you can run 100 miles do run it the next day it's not necessary for you to go and run 200 miles if you are not interested in doing it don't do it don't yeah. let others say or influence that this is something you should do with the body or this is something you should mold in the body and second thing which is again quite trendy nowadays i i do it i find most of my students and uh, friends also do it is keeping a diary or a journal or a place where you make sure that you write at the end of the day the things that you are happy for the things that you are grateful for and the things that you are proud of if mm-hmm. someone can do this each and every single day i do it the moment i see i stand in front of the mirror i'm like no this is somewhat i'm not happy with the lower belly fat is still there immediately consciously i make an effort to try to figure out at least one thing about which i am proud of and which i am happy of this is a very very conscious effort i know shaming or pointing out or figuring the mistakes in my body is very normal because we have been conditioned by the society in such a manner that this that thought comes very normally that this is wrong because the society has made us believe that uh, our grass body shape and this uh, uh, a uh, a whitish uh, whitish color complexion is beautiful long straight silky hair is beautiful so that is something we have been conditioned to born in and so the pointing out of the negative things comes very normally comes very naturally so what i try to do my with myself is i i force myself to come out with one positive thing one positive thing every day this is this has to come firstly initially it will take time Yeah. because again that instant gratification and validation from others we don't we never validate ourselves no matter what we do we are like 
maybe i uh, that's not enough maybe this is not enough maybe this is the level or this is the perfection i should be at so yeah. one thing that i can say to everyone is to try to force your own uh, or try to look into yourself and figure out one good thing about you which no one will tell you which yeah. no one has right. ever told you maybe if you do this the next day it becomes easier the third day it becomes easier than the first day and the fourth day that that flows normally so there is there is a change from the negative way you are starting to slowly reorient yourself into a positive direction and once that happen you are spiritually emotionally mentally physically you are at a happy place nothing can take you down from that place anymore very that's true. what i do yeah thank you so much for that jayanti i think you know that was so very well said and it reminds me to also mention this to all of you uh, you know we always teach our kids what's a good touch and what's a bad touch i think we don't teach our kids saying what is okay what is not okay in terms not of okay. commenting because a good has as important as it is in terms of talking about good touch and bad touch it's also important for individuals to learn saying which comment is a good comment which one is not to be taken into our minds because i think that is what goes a very long time and stays back in our minds in cultivating our character our attitude towards our life what is being fed as a kid and all these body shaming issues does not start after a certain age i think all that is built into a person from childhood and when something really goes wrong one tick off it it all comes back like a flow so please teach your kids to you know uh, what's a good touch what's not a bad not only teaching kripalini i have observed that what parents talk the children yeah, learn exactly that. it's not right. about teaching it's about what it's we only, show yeah. yeah so i i have a neighbor uh, the mother goes on commenting on someone who walks on the road yeah like oh this girl uh, wore the same sari yesterday yeah. oh and the daughter replicates exactly. the same thing exactly yeah the daughter it might is seem harmless yeah, yeah. it might the sound harmless but it's eight years yeah. eight yeah. nine years daughter she's going to second standard and yeah. she comments exactly like how the mother does My so God. parents please be very careful when what you talk to others yeah. and wow you comment your yeah. child is observing everything like a empty of... this thing there is sponge right they just soak yes. in whatever that they see yeah yeah there yeah that's why it's important to choose who is who you are around. i mean parents you cannot choose you live with them right you grow with them so, so that's why i'm requesting the parents to because, because 50 like if you look down upon ourselves i always see you know i feel half of me is of course my family values my heritage my everything but half of me is made up of people who i grew up with correct you know and and that half is something that you can actually control Correct. to a certain extent yeah? yeah there is a part of destiny that you meet people that people happen to you but there's also a part that you can play to you know choose the people who and allow those people to affect you you know that's also there right there can be a lot of people in your life i have a ton n number of friends yeah but it's only the the, the circle that that i allow in that they are coming should because like ripalni what you said you know yeah it it I agree we should be teaching our children or showing our children that you know your comments can also hurt people and then show them the mirror all that but it is something not very black and white like the good touch and bad bad touch you know what i mean because now we are breeding into a generation mm. who uh, have become less tolerant Mm. they have become less tolerant to comments they have become less tolerant to understand that these comments are okay to take in and do something about it you know because they get affected more than our generation i feel they get mm. affected so much so that even a small comment can affect them and that's also another battle that you know you need to make them you know yeah there can be people commenting but don't let that affect you yeah and if i think it is something constructive it's, work it's upon a lot it lot to do with you know the mental space and the ability how much can a can a kid soak in and this particular age i think they are exposed to quite a lot number of things without any barricades i think yes. the entire world is open because of the internet and they learn and they soak in everything so you have to help your kid validate and understand yes, exactly. what they correct Yeah so with that we come to the end of our conversation before we close i want to know from all three of you your closing remarks because this is going to remain here forever project nyan will never come down i will not change the video so what is it that you want to tell the world what is your message what is it that you want the world to look like anybody who is listening to this anybody who will listen to this in the future probably 100 years from now there might be some kid who will sit down and google this and probably is learning about what did 
our ancestors speak about uh, body shaming then so what is your final closing thoughts what do you want to say to the entire world who's going to watch this now and in the future uh, punita over to you okay uh, see actually i have written this down because i i saw this on someone's uh, autobiography the okay. small note what the world really needs is openness an open soul that is first is they need open eye an open eye that can see the pain and truth in every person they see because every person has a story so you need to see that so please have open eyes open wow. doors a heart that welcomes others with lot of love a open mind a mind that can consider others point of view see we always see from our point of view but there's something from others point of view so please have open minds open ears ears that has patience to listen to other story before you judge a person please listen to them so open ears and open hearts that can love everyone equally without discriminating any person so this is what i read in a book and i thought i should mention very this very inspirational very inspirational so very really nice. everyone should have open souls that's what i request Absolutely, please yeah. don't have narrow mindedness and start judging randomly any person every person has a story uh, mm. has a lot of lot of things are there inside that person so just randomly don't comment or uh, speak ill about that person this is what i request the people out there and yeah no matter what minus point you have if you consider it as a minus point height weight uh, uh facial texture squint eyes uh, bad teeth or whatever whatever minus point you have please stop caring about what others think about you you have a life go live it do whatever you want go jump go do i think that zindagi nya milegi dobara there's a movie right yeah 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 so those three boys did something randomly they pick picked out an event and they did right mm-hmm. i know all of us won't have so much of money to do those things <laughs> but still do whatever, whatever you want you to do in life no matter what others think about you none of us have limitations believe me yeah you have a limitation that means you can overcome it by some other trick Yeah. For example, I cannot on a switch which is six foot high. Hmm. A light I cannot on which is six foot high. So what do I do? I use a broom. I take a broom and I on it. Hmm. So very simple trick this is. Yeah. You don't have to go and tell out the world that I use a broom to switch on the light. Yeah. This is the simplest small solutions which you can find yourself. So please stop listening to the comments out there. You cannot stop every person out there yeah. and teach them a lesson. the world is going to comment no matter how beautiful you are uh, there will be a comment for everything so uh, i and i request parents to be the biggest support for their kids that will really help the kids out there so I that's what i so request punita i think that was like you know fantastic ending that you gave and this also reminds me of dr deepa who was there as a guest in one of our sessions where she was also mentioning this she said all that i can see is the ground and the sky and if i see anything in between that is the limitation that i am putting to myself i think i can connect to the same thing what you're trying to say now punita saying you know all of us have disabilities if you're only seeing that obstacle that means you're not seeing your destiny don't yeah. look at it as a obstacle saying okay this is the problem that i have this is where you know this is what i want to fix look at all the strengths that you have and Punita is a very good example for all of us to live by and to learn from. Mm-hmm. Punita, thank you so much for taking your time and being here with thank us you. today. Yeah. And if anyone is feeling low and want to talk to me, my number I can definitely share, <laughs> and they can call and talk to me any time, and I will try my best to uh, boost up your confidence levels. <laughs> That's so sweet I of you. I've tagged her on Facebook, so you can always write to her on Facebook and then get yeah. connected. And uh, I'm sure she will always be there for all of you to get connected yes. and to talk to in uh-huh. case you want to go back and talk to her. Thank you so much, Punita, for that. Thank you, Kripalni. Over Thank to you. you. Thank you, Punita. Uh, you. Oh yeah. Okay. So me. Um, I think few points that I already mentioned. I think I want to emphasize as a closing remark is, uh, of course. body talk it begins and ends with you okay mm-hmm. now what you do in between is entirely you it's up to you and what you do yeah with it and perceptions others perceptions are subjective and inaccurate 
Hmm. Believe that. Yeah, they are, they are that person's perception, right? And it's inaccurate. And how much that you should allow it to affect you, again, it depends on you. Yeah. How you do it, you figure it out on your own, in your own way, how, sh- how soon or later you, you do that. Yeah. And every, I think, I think this is the most, this is the part where I feel we all hold a responsibility to speak up. Hmm. We all hold that. And the more people speak on this issue, like many other social stigma issues, the better it becomes. Mm. So every, you know, allow every unwelcome comment to be a situation where you're speaking about what your definition on what is okay and what is not okay. Right. Yeah, uh, e- e- even if it matters, like if it's a very close person to you, definitely it, it becomes a close conversation, becomes a detailed conversation. If yeah. it's a, a person who's totally unrelated to you and it is not uh, targeting you, I think I think that also you're responsible because if you see that somebody is commenting to a, a person who is in whatever way weaker, socially weaker or physically weaker, I think you also have a responsibility to speak up in that okay. instance. Uh, and and this is what like going back, this is what our children are seeing, and this is what we need to I think spread yeah. tolerance, but also tolerance to the right things. Right, right. And, and I thank think you so much, Kripa. Yeah. Sanam, thank you so much for saying this because, you know, even when I actually thought about bringing this topic up, right, I mentioned saying I saw Punita and I wanted to bring it up. Then I was like, is it even okay? Will our community even understand what we're trying to say? Because when we talk about body shaming, body honoring, it's a public platform that we're going on to. And I think, you know, just the way that we see all of you commenting, it gives a lot of hope for all of us who are who are here today talking about it, saying you understand you reciprocate what we're trying to say and you understand. And I think as a country, we are changing. We are getting better. We are understanding, saying, you know, uh, this is right, this is wrong. And I think we are on the right path. All that we need to do is be conscious, be aware of what we are feeding into ourselves and what are we giving out into the world. It's only that. What are you saying? What are you taking? Have the right conversations, just not in India. It's all over. It's a global, it's an endemic yeah. You know, and so it's definitely, it's definitely there. Yeah. Yeah. So just make sure that your conversations are always fair, are always positive. You're talking to an outsider, you're, you're giving out your energy. You don't know how is that energy going to affect that person. Always be cautious, be aware. Yeah. And if you're talking to yourself, also remember you are as important as everybody else in this world. You have to have to yeah, take care of to yourself play. because that's the only responsibility God has given you and sent. The rest of it, you have made it for yourself. If you have any other responsibility, it's because you made it for yourself and you took it up as a responsibility. Yes. <laughs> the only thing God has asked you to take care of is your own body and your soul and your mind. So don't yes. allow anything no- wrong to come into yourself. Don't allow it also from your own self to talk back like that right thank you so much for articulating it so well sanam and putting this together thank you for your time we know it's your daughter's birthday and we know that you know the kid is uh, uh, waiting yeah, she, for she, her. she's come like two three times and i'm like okay okay <laughs> uh, our wishes to your daughter thank you so much thank you Punita. it's your dad's birthday so thank you so much for being here in spite of it and doing this thank you thank that you for ringing this company but Thank you. Uh, yes, yes, absolutely. And I think it's a very good way that, you know, we are doing this for a better future for your daughter and for a better world. Thank you for your time today, Sanam. Over to you, Jayanti, before we close. So what are your closing uh, remarks? My closing remark would be just one sentence. Perfection is overhyped. Don't fall into anyone's definition or even your own definition of what is perfect and what is not perfect. Just imagine and just imagine a world where everyone is your vision of perfection. It would be dull, it would be boring and it would be idiotic to live in that world. It's yeah. all the differences that makes it so beautiful and so 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 lively. Yeah. If everyone is the clone of me or is a copy of maybe Sanam, then I would not want to be in that world. I don't want, I want Sanams, I want Punitas, I want Kupalinis, I want everyone. I want even an Iladri in my life. As a matter of fact, he's yeah. a brother to me. So without yeah. him, I can't imagine the world. So perfection is overhyped. Just don't fall into anyone's definition of perfection or don't define even what is perfection in your own eyes. There yeah. is always room for improvement. Try to improve. Try to improve yourself mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually. In every possible aspect of your personality, there is scope of growth. Try yeah. to grow. 
but don't think that i am perfect or don't try to think that i can be perfect if i do this or if i do that or if i braid my hair like this or if i wear this type of clothes or if i if i don't wear this type of clothes or if i weigh this much then only i am perfect please perfection is over hi that's what i have to say no that's that's fantastic uh, jayanti you know that's exactly what we are trying to also communicate right saying there is nothing called a 100 on 100 and there is nothing called a black and a white a white is already a composition of so many colors put together and there is nothing called just black and without a black there is no white and the world is made out of a lot of grays it's not the black or it's not the white and like you rightly mentioned if let's say everybody was an aishwarya right would would we all like it no neither would we all like it if everybody was just the same and we also you know when we were talking to twins the twins were only saying in spite of we being the same there's so much of difference that we carry right and they enjoy the differences that they have they also don't like the similarities and the same things that they have so it's all about accepting differences it's all about saying you know i don't have to fit into something which is already created create your own path and go fit into it and so call me one second one. yes punita yeah i just ha- uh, i had a very important point which i missed out yes yes please This go ahead please to all the mothers Yeah. please don't raise your daughters just for the sake of getting her married marriage this is something yeah. i relate with because i yes. have been continuously subjected to this i even had relatives who would who would be coming to me and saying like you know education and all matters what about marriage, marriage. what about yeah. what about marriage and i'm like yeah. what about it please tell me <laughs> what about yeah. it so your daughter is not born just to get get her married please right. make her financially physically emotionally in every way independent enough to choose her own partner yeah okay this is my request to all the mothers there please don't crib that oh i have to get her married and i have to make her miss perfect so yeah. this is my sincere request and i really wanted to tell this point and i missed it out yeah no, i think that's that's a very important point irrespective if it's a girl or for a boy you are Boy. not here only for another relationship it's for you to take care of your own self and as a parent i think you have a very big responsibility of changing that mindset and for all the parents who are listening to us i hope there's quite a good number of lessons that you've taken back from this session and uh, once again thank you so much for joining this conversation thank and you, for thank making, you. making a difference in all our lives and for all the audience who joined i know that there were quite a lot of other comments which is also put out here which i didn't uh, pull out i would request all the guests to probably go back and you know respond to them because there was quite a lot of other comments which also came in in the interest of time i didn't uh, take up those questions thank you so much once again for giving thank us you, thank you kripalani thank you kripalani thank keep you. the conversation on is it just thank yes, you so really good thank you. Uh, until we meet again the next tuesday we will have another interesting topic so until we meet again please do stay, stay safe and sending you all loads of love and hugs bye bye thank bye you guys. so much bye. thank you